People will think that you're not as smart as you are, that you're not as confident as you are, that you're not as capable as you are. But what we want to do is surprise these people because you are confident, capable, smart, able, willing to do anything that you want to do. Let's talk femininity and confidence because it's one of my favorite topics. And I know you like to talk about it too, okay? If you're not already following me on all socials, make sure you do TikTok, Instagram, and of course here on YouTube. And also follow me on LTK in case you wanna shop any of my looks. I get lots of questions about femininity, confidence, how I do what I do. My knee jerk response is usually, it just happens. It's not always something that I'm thinking about, but I get how for some people breaking it all down is helpful. So I have some notes. Let's go over all of it. The first is you need to stand tall and even sit tall. So even in this chair right now, my back is not even in the back of the chair because if it were, this is where I would be. Absolutely not. Okay. My back is straight. Shoulders are down and I'm looking directly at you. And I try to be conscious of whenever I'm walking or in the midst of anybody to be doing the same thing. Stand tall. It literally can feel like you're doing a back exercise, but stand tall because otherwise you'd be like this. And who's walking around? this way. If anyone's walking around that way, they are not a confident person. Okay. There could be a lot of reasons that I've attributed to that, but they're generally not confident. I like to not only present as a confident woman, but to be a confident woman. So it's got to not only come from the inside, but it has to show on the outside to really command the presence of whomever you are around. Just stand tall. Good God, right? We're not trying to put our chin up because if the chin's all the way up, then it's giving arrogance. The chin is more horizontal. It's not down looking at the ground and then up at someone. We're here at eye level, but we have, of course, elevated our chin in a way that shows that we are confident. When I mentioned the confidence and it showing from the inside out, I think it's important to be in therapy. I've been in therapy for three years now and it has done wonders for me on so many levels. I have a video where I talked about all the lessons that I've learned in therapy and it was up until that date and I've still been in therapy and it is still doing wonders in my life. That is important and I use BetterHelp. I have a link below if you wanna get, I think it's a one week free or one month free. Use it if you want to. I get nothing from it, but a yeehaw if you will. Feel free to jump in and use that. I've been using it. I pay less than $100 per session every month. And again, like I said, I've been doing it for three years now. It is such a life changer. It's important to heal because again, if there's a reason why you are not feeling confident on the inside and it's showing on the outside, then you want to tackle that first because you may find it difficult to present yourself in a confident manner if you don't feel that way on the inside. We have to work on what's going on inside our bodies, inside our minds, inside our souls. That's really important, okay? Eye contact is important. If you've noticed, as I'm speaking to you right now, now, I'm not looking at the monitor at myself. I'm looking at you. That is key. You want to maintain eye contact. Now, I will say that while you're thinking you can look aside, look up into the sky, maybe look down and break eye contact in a natural fashion, because if you stare at someone and never lose focus on that person, it may be alarming for that person. However, it also can be alarming if all you're doing is looking around and not at the person with whom you are speaking. So you got to find a way to make Make sure that the eye contact is consistent, but not creepy. So every now and then feel free to look away, you know, and then come right back. It is so important. I, I should mention this. My undergrad degree is in business and then I have a master's degree in higher education. I've presented to thousands of people. I've taught seminar classes. I've of course given in-class presentations to my classmates. So I have experience in public speaking. It's been a long time coming. This confidence journey, the exposure has certainly gotten the kinks and gotten the anxiety out of me that I'm a lot better now, but I still have to prep myself even for these videos to make sure that I'm speaking as if I'm talking to someone who is right in front of me. But eye contact I've learned is very, very important. What's also important is slowing down your speech. Like I said, I've given presentations. I have a little bit of a stutter. You feel what I'm saying? It's nothing that overtakes my conversation, but it does happen. And I'll literally feel it coming on where I will change the word that I'm trying to say, or just take a breath and restart. Because I just know that if I go forward on this plane, on this trajectory, I'm going to stutter. And I don't want to do that. I've had way too many instances in public speaking where I have stuttered and it is uncomfortable for me. Granted, the room is large. It's dark in the audience. I don't know who's noticed and what they're thinking. All I know is I'm horrified. Okay. So what I've learned over the years as a grown woman is to speak with a cadence that is comfortable. If you've noticed, even in this video, 
I am speaking at a comfortable cadence that is not rushed because that's also a way that you show that not only are you commanding your audience, you are confident in what you're saying and you are in control. They're waiting with bated breath to hear what you have to say. And if you notice also, I don't use filler words. If I use filler words, it's because I'm just being silly. But do I use them to replace my thinking time? No, because it's okay for there to be a pause while you think of the next word you want to say. That's okay. Every pause does not need to be filled with a filler word like, um, uh, so, like. No, we're not doing that. Once you start to do that, to me, you've lost your audience because you sound very insecure and unsure of yourself. We want to present as being confident, aware of the subject matter, whatever that is. Think of you being on an interview and you're asked a question. You are the one giving the answer. You have the answer, right? Tell me about what it is that you do. This is your answer. This is not something you're reading from a book. So take your time and explain what it is that you do. Do you get what I'm saying? Of course, it takes the confidence. It takes you knowing what you want to say. But even if you don't know what the answer is in a conversation, you're not not sure where to take the next line of communication, take a breather and make the person wait. Make the person wait. They're going to wait on what you have to say because you've paused intentionally and then you're going to kick the conversation back into gear and go on with what you want to say. Do you see how I just did that? I paused and that's okay because you're still listening. I hope. <laughs> Comment below and let me know. You're still listening, you're still here. You've not lost interest in our conversation. I'm maintaining eye contact. So you know that when I paused, I didn't fall asleep. I was just taking a breath to think about what it is that I wanted to say. I also like to speak concisely. I like to enunciate my words. I enjoy linguistics, I really do. If you watch my vlogs and you know that I will literally write down words that I overuse and then write down alternatives so that I can employ those and get rid of all of the rundown words that I've just used and abused, honey. It's called your surface lexicon, which is the words that we employ on a day-to-day -day basis that are so outdone if you really Think about it. Everyone is talking that same way. Everyone is saying that same stuff. You feel me? And then you've got the deep lexicon, which is a word bank that is not always explored that we can explore because we have it at our disposal. For instance, I've begun to, instead of saying thank you, I'll say much obliged. It's odd because to the normal person, we don't normally say much obliged. We're saying thank you so much. I'm so sorry, right? But I'm now saying much obliged, more so in written form via email, but in person, I do catch myself saying the usual thank you. However, I wanna change that because I want to use more elevated language. I'm not saying that you need to change your whole vocabulary, but what I am saying is the most confident among us use a level of diction and linguistics that's not commonplace. I enjoy language so much that I like to do that. I enjoy doing that and I like to enunciate as I said. So you can tell from this video in all of my videos that that makes me happy and that's what I do. I love a good firm handshake and that's because I mentioned I studied business in undergraduate. That was one of the main things that we learned very early on was interactions in a business setting obviously. A firm handshake is important. I absolutely loathe greatly the wet dog handshake. I do not like when men or other women assume that because I'm a woman I'm going Going to shake their hand like a dead fish. Absolutely not. If you've met me, we're going to shake the right way with the palm open and I'm going to give a gentle squeeze. When I play an arm wrestle, you feel me? I'm going to squeeze your hand and shake your hand firmly because you have to understand that I understand what this interaction means. It can mean so many things, one of which is that I mean business. If I'm shaking your hand, it means business. If I'm meeting someone and we're greeting with a hug, it's not so much business, it's more relaxed. Do you get what I'm saying? But if you're in the business field, if you're in the working world, if you're in the office, a good firm handshake is so important. I've worked with very highly respected, wealthy parents in the past, and my handshake always was firm and clear. If they even tried the wet, like they would do it, and you had no choice but to shake with the fingers, ah, oh, that gets me so bad. Badly. But again, you may be in instances where you just do a hug and that's cool too, and that's more casual. But if you're not, please let your handshake be firm. It goes a long way because I've been met with, wow, you got a firm handshake. Wow, what a handshake, I swear. Because the assumption is that because I'm a woman, my handshake is going to be lackluster and there's nothing about me 
that's lackluster. I love speaking first. I've come a long way because I have not always been that way. I'm more of a behind the scenes kind of person, but obviously my job is in front of the scenes. So you would think that that is more my speed. I'm comfortable here. I can do this. This is what I do, but where my more comfortable is behind the scenes for real. But I've learned to play the game. You got to play the game. You got to show up. I used to be in meetings in my corporate jobs where I was literally told by my supervisor, speak up, find something to say in the meeting. Even if no one has directed a question toward you per se, find something to say just to get your voice heard. And she would push me. She was a black woman. She wanted me to be heard and seen. And I just wanted to fall back. And she's like, make your voice heard. Say something in every meeting. So it was a challenge for me to be like, okay, let me find something to say, honey, to show that not only am I awake, I'm engaged, I'm tapped in, okay? I've dialed into this conversation. So I take that and now, even though I'm almost four years removed from the corporate setting, I take that into my life now. I'm gonna speak first. I will, for the most part, be the one to greet people. Hey, how's it going? How are you? I will also force people to say good morning. <laughs> I used to be the person that did not value the words good morning, but I've become the person that I'm not going to tolerate you speaking to me without saying good morning. So whether I'm at a hotel, a restaurant, anywhere, a store, you are not gonna just start talking to me without a good morning. And if you don't say it, I'm gonna say good morning. Oh, how can I, how can I help you? I say good morning. Okay, because I need you to return the favor before we jump into this right now. It's a matter of respect. It's a nice pleasantry. It's a pleasantry that I feel we do need to continue, especially when working with other people. It's just a nice thing to do. Even when I'm texting, if it's the morning time, I'm gonna give you a good morning. I'm at least gonna say, hey, if it's the afternoon. You ain't gonna just be texting me and just going right into it. I'm not gonna respond or I'm going to respond with, hey, and you're gonna be like, so da 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 and I'm like, hey. Let's get the greeting out of the way before we get into all of the, the nuances, okay? Let's set the stage first. I used to not be this way, okay? I was the complete opposite. But with growing up, becoming more feminine, becoming more polished, I've recognized that things do need to change. And that's one of them things. And listen, if folks forget, you, one thing you're gonna do is you're gonna remember to greet me. Cause I'm gonna greet you. Hi, how's it going? Oh, do you need this? Hi, how's it going? How you feeling today? And then we going, then I'll answer you because I get out there right now, I'm not gonna answer you. I'm not gonna answer your question or your comment without you greeting me. Cause I'm gonna greet you. <laughs> Honey, you gotta look presentable, okay? I've come a long way as well. I've done, I've done Buku videos where I've talked about letting go of myself, forgetting myself, all of the things. And then getting rid of all of my clothes that made me feel frumpy so that I had no choice but to wear nice things. Cause there are times where I'm just running to go do something real quick or just at home and I don't wanna put on my nice stuff, you know, that poverty mindset where you have your school clothes and your home clothes. Well, now everything is everything. So it's all in good condition. It's all nice. Nothing is just so oh, home clothes and outside clothes. It's all the same thing to me now. And that was intentional because I wanted to force myself to look nice at all times. Now I won't lie to you. There's been a time or two where I've gone to drop off my child to school in my pajamas and I threw a hoodie on top, okay? I'm not gonna lie to you about that. I didn't have to get out of the car, praise Jehovah, okay? But for the most part, I really do take time to make sure that I put myself together because the mouth and the confidence has to match what we look like. Cause I'll never forget, and I told this story in a video where I was at a doctor appointment and I was not treated well by the doctor and I had to raise a concern and I spoke with, I forget the name, maybe the manager of the building. I don't know how you, what her title was. She was very nice, but you better believe that when I went in that day, I was in full makeup. You might call it hair and makeup like I'm in the studio, but I was in full hair and makeup and I looked like my normal day-to-day -day self, a woman who works from home and creates videos for a living. So I was dressed nicely because what's left over is nice stuff. Even my most basic clothes is like, oh, where are you going? I'm just thinking, I'm going here, you know, what's the issue? But that's all been intentional because I want to look nice. I want to look presentable. I want to be taken seriously. I know from past experiences, and I'm sure you do as well, how I'm treated when I look like a scrub versus how I'm treated when I look like someone of substance, of prominence. Like, yo, you can be working at Walmart, but that's it's okay when you're on your off day, come correct, you feel me? It's not about, oh, cause you have this, you can. No, you can if you want to, you feel me? The, the two blacks should match, you feel me? The, the gym set can match. Amazon got some awesome options. Not all of my stuff is expensive, you feel what I'm saying? But it's intentional when I get dressed that I'm coming here and I want to make sure that even if there's no complaint that I have to make, when you see me, you know this woman means business and people notice it. They'll say, wow, you look nice. You always look nice. 
I love the way you dress. I love that shoe. I love that purse. I love your nails. People will regard you based on how they always see you. And I want to always be regarded and seen as a woman who cares about her appearance and who demands respect. A woman who's confident. You gotta smell good, honey. You got to smell good. Okay, if you wanna go with a nice body wash and give the body wash siage, feel free. But I'm gonna do the body wash, the body oil, I'm gonna do the body spray, and I'm gonna do the fragrance, and I'm gonna carry another fragrance in my purse in case I'm out and I don't smell myself anymore, because that does happen. Others smell you, you don't smell yourself anymore. I'm gonna spray on something different. I'm okay to mix. I just know that I always want to smell myself and I want it to smell good. My sense of smell is so strong, hence why my home is always being scented by a candle or two. There are a few on right now. I've got a candle warmer right here and there's one right here. I've got plugins, I've got the whole nine yards. And then of course for the body, like I said, I'm going to douse myself with fragrance. I'm not thinking of anyone around me when I spray my fragrance. Cause when it runs out, I'm gonna do what? Buy more, okay? Praise the Lord. I'm going to drench myself. Even hair perfume, I have some good ones that I love, you know what I'm saying? Spray your hair. If you have some long tresses going on that day, get Give it a little spray, cause when you twist and turn, twist and turn, yeah, it's gonna give a concierge. When you give someone a hug, it's gonna be, wow, your hair smells so good. You feel what I'm saying? Like, we are turning it up all kinds of notches because we care about how we look and feel and present ourselves. You might find that this video is similar to a different one I did where I talked about reinventing ourselves. It does have similarities, but this one's more different. It's specific to being a confident woman. And I know that it's, it's come across like it's more outwardly. I'm not talking about doing a Bible study devotional and all of that. I did touch on the therapy. I mean, we can get into all that if you want to. Come up along and let me know because that's a whole different aspect of it. I'm more so talking about how to present yourself as a feminine and confident woman because I've gotten the question so many times and like I said, okay, I can talk about it. A confident woman is well-versed in things that can sometimes surprise people. I love to listen to TED Talks. I love to watch different videos on different topics because you never know when you're gonna be somewhere engaging in a conversation that is outside of the realm of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, but perhaps relates to the person with whom you're speaking, and then you can talk about it. So I'm a content creator. I love beauty, fashion, lifestyle, health, the whole nine yards. But let's say that I'm talking to someone about psychology or sociology. I can talk about the different attachment styles and personality styles, just things that I've gleaned from YouTube videos that I did not go to school to study. And you might be thinking, how do you know that? Well, because it's interesting to me. And because it interests me, I watch videos on these topics. I listen to podcasts on these topics. I read books that are healing books that talk about psychology and sociology topics. So it's just so nice and it's a nice surprise. Like the firm handshake, people assume that your handshake will be wet and just saggy and dangly and just limp. People will also assume that you won't be well versed into an array of topics, but what if you were? What a pleasant surprise. I love surprises and I love to surprise people because one thing you can never do is doubt me. Well, you can doubt me, but I'll always prove you wrong. I'm letting you know right now. And that is one thing that I always just chuckle with. I chuckle at it because people will think that you're not as smart as you are, that you're not as confident as you are, that you're not as capable as you are. But what we want to do is surprise these people because you are confident, capable, smart, able, willing to do anything that you want to do because you care and because you're going to put the work into doing that. So I hope that these points that I've made will encourage you and inspire you to be better than you already are, to challenge yourself, to do more, to read books, to learn more, because it matters. Not only do we want to be beautiful and present ourselves in a feminine way with a lot of confidence, we also want to be smart. And believe you and me, we are smart women. Okay, now comment below and let me know if you enjoyed this video. Leave me any other topics that interest you. Follow me on all socials and pick one of these two videos to watch after this one and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.